please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Good morning. Welcome to Bazaar Morning Call. I'm Lata and with me Anujan Sonia. Well, we have got caution written all over the place on the Asian markets and the US markets. But actually, the Fed didn't do anything to scare markets. Uh, they always uh, are listening to markets more than any other uh, central bank. And they kept rates unchanged as expected. The language was always expected to be tweaked somewhat. And uh, that's exactly what they have said. Overall inflation, uh, other inflation other than food and fuel, have moved closer to their 2% mark, uh, is what they have noted. Remember, last time they said that... Uh, Inflation continues to run below our 2% mark. So to that extent, you can say there is an upside risk in their commentary. But uh, the Fed Fund futures are all indicating a max of two uh, uh, rate hikes more. June is a rate hike given. So the markets are not sulking because of the Fed, because it's entirely your expected lines. Mm -hmm. There is an underlying caution I want to point out for the last two, three days. The uh, uh, dollar index has remained above 92 and continues at 92.50. Yeah. A little off 92.8 which it touched and that would be a five-year low, um, a four-year high. But uh, uh, that has spread a little bit of caution. In any case, uh, I don't think overnight India had too many reasons to believe that we could outperform. Yeah. The set of numbers we got, uh, some of them were really troubled ones and you know them better. Yes, in fact, uh, you know, I was just coming to that morning, uh, Lata, morning, Anuj, not just Interglobe, which everyone knows about. I mean, there was a huge decline in yields, etc. But the earnings calendar post-market hours has looked pretty weak. Whether you talk about Siemens, they spoke about a delay in finalization of orders. Tata Power, the Mundra losses have, you know, piled on. And even Hero Motor Corp, I mean, in the conference call, they did mention that there are many margin headwinds as they head into FY19. So I guess the earnings calendar has not been, uh, you know, that uh, impressive over the last uh, 24 hours or so. But uh, Anuj Morning, uh, you were telling us yesterday that, you know, when everything looks good, uh, the market doesn't oblige. And that's what happened. But uh, what about today? Things are not looking good. Hang Seng, in fact, has a deep cut. Mm. Our own markets, we have some problems. Uh, you think the bears could sort of get the upper hand? Morning, Sonia. So today is better, actually, because, you know, <laughs> because it's, it's you, we're starting with bad news. Uh, you know, uh, Goldilocks worries me always. Uh, and, you know, yesterday what was interesting was Maruti ended at low point. Tata mm. Motors ended at low point and deep in the red. Uh, the market rejected good news yesterday. Uh, but every day is a new day. Uh, yesterday was a warning sign and the market has given a warning sign. It's up to, you know, investors, traders, whether they want to hear it or not. Uh, I think the message yesterday was clear. Even if the market recovers today in the mid caps, rallies, uh, get out of leverage. Uh, get out of them, move into safety, move into large caps. Uh, there's uh, also a move to increase margins uh, in the you know option side, uh, yeah. especially on the stock option side. So uh, get into index, uh, you know, get into good quality stocks because index yesterday also there was a 60 point intraday dip that was bought. Uh, Almost, you know, all, the last closing was almost in the green for the for the mark for the Nifty for Sensex. It actually was, and the Bank Nifty as well. Today is also the weekly options expiry, so the deleveraging normally, which starts on Wednesday uh, or Tuesday, doesn't really end there. It normally continues till Friday, uh, and that makes market healthy. So this is that uh, you know process that the market is going through. HDFC Bank, of course, would be the key today because you have the weekly options expiry, and that is the biggest component. Uh, what are the key levels to watch? As I said yesterday as well, 10,647 on the Nifty and 25,029 on the Bank Nifty. In terms of support. In terms of support, because that's the Friday low, the series low. Series lows are always important, especially if you have a good expiry, and after that you have a very good first day. After that, if a series lows are broken, then the market has a bit of a problem. But till then, you're fine. Uh, one good thing which has happened over the last one week or uh, 10 days is that the, you know, not that, uh, you know, it was uh, any problem earlier, but uh, the weight of Kotak is now almost about to surpass ICICI Bank. And Kotak has promoter holding, ICICI does not. Uh, market cap wise, Kotak is already above ICICI Bank. But okay. because we're talking about free float market cap, so Kotak is almost moving above ICICI Bank. Uh, Indescent has already moved above SBI. Yeah. So the stronger stocks uh, are now uh, accounting for more weight in the, in the bank nifty, which is a bit of a good news for the bulls. Uh, but, uh, you know, today's theme, I think, still would be to, uh, you know, get out of leverage positions if the market gives you a rally, especially in the mid-cap side, in the FNO side. Look at stocks where client concentration is very high and those would be the stocks where you could see some pressure today. Okay, so not too much. Uh, of but but, on, the, but on the index, it still remains a buy on dips market. 
till the market gives the reversal of that message of the reversal of exactly the, you know that uh, reversal would happen only below 10647 say on the nifty and 25020 on the bank nifty otherwise i mean chasing momentum is not working but buying the dips is working let's see if today's dip actually is gets is there any firm resistance <laughs> In terms 10, of 750 or 10,750, 10, of course, is uh, an important now documented uh, resistance as well. Uh, Latap, uh, uh, that, that's the zone, of course, uh, where uh, you have almost 66 percent retracement uh, of the entire correction. So, that of course remains uh, an important zone. But, uh, short point here is that this is a market which at index level is still rewarding you for, for buying the dips. Mm. Uh, but, uh, in individual stocks and mid caps, don't overstay your welcome. Yeah, no, abso absolutely, in mid caps, I think the, uh, the party had gone on too much on leverage stocks. And even yesterday, it was not all the really bad stocks that got a beating. So, mm. you know, beating. Uh, uh, Further badgering in mid caps cannot be ruled out even on fundamentals. Oh, yes. and, they and don't deserve to trade exactly. where they are. You know, just, just, just something like a Marico. Uh, minor disappointment in results because you have priced in the moon now. Uh, and you saw the the move on the Marico stock. See the intraday chart of Marico. That of course was a one month chart because before the earnings we had seen that big move, uh, and now that entire uh, move is gone. Mm. Uh, that was post results. Uh, mm. That was a move that I was watching out for in closing bell when the uh, you know earnings reaction was there from 348 there about to 317. It was a swift 10 percent intraday. No, actually, move. the contrast was with Darbar's numbers. I mean, yeah. they're not strictly comparable, but then yeah, you know, on hair oil segments, mm. in certain segments they compete. And considering that Darbar turned out a good number, uh, Maricos looked definitely pedestrian. All right, today is also a big day of earnings for the non-index large caps. A lot of numbers like Edelweiss, MRF, Imami, etc. will be coming out today. But let's take a look at what our wise experts have to say as we head into trade this morning. Jonathan Garner of Morgan Stanley says they see limited upside, if any, to the year end. They expect multiples to remain constrained by the monetary policy tightening in the US and China and uncertainty over protectionism. Consensus earnings estimates still look too high in their view and the macro backdrop is deteriorating. Jonathan adds that in Asia emerging market equity markets, he uh, thinks there is a high probability that the end January uh, move that we saw was a major market top. Okay. Well, that top has certainly remained for India so far. Okay, uh, more uh, calls coming on the equity side. Sanjay Mukim of Bank of America, Maryland says, a narrative common in India nowadays is that a revival in earnings growth will help the market deliver returns despite elevated multiples. He believes this is unlikely. FY19 growth expectations for 70% of large caps exceed that delivered over the last three years. Sanjay adds that beats are likely to be scarce, limiting near-term returns. Bank of America, Maryland remains cautious on the market with a December 2018 Sensex target of 32,000. They prefer financials with a retail focus, staples and stocks with exposure to rural or to housing. Okay, and let's get you some money market views now and tell you how to approach that. The dollar, uh, the rupee that is, has been uh, firm at the 66 mark. In fact, 66.60 was where it shut yesterday. Mohan Chinoy of Kotak Mahindra Bank says the dollar has strengthened against most currencies post the Fed outcome, with the dollar index steadily rising from a low of 88.50 to a current level of 92.70. He adds that the rupee has stabilized after the recent weakness and is expected to trade around 66.5 to 66.85 against the dollar today. Okay, and on bonds, Mohan Chinoy uh, says that the GSEC market continues to be bearish with two consecutive scheduled auctions devolving on primary dealers. Higher net supply of government securities in May, coupled with continuous supply of state development loans, will exert pressure on yields. One should not expect a 10-year benchmark bond yield to trade in a range of 7.72 to 7.76 for the day. That's a dog of a market. Okay, over to Nigel then for the world view. Well, all eyes were on the U.S. Fed Reserve. In fact, they've kept interest rates unchanged, but they've given positive commentary. They say that, in fact, inflation numbers moving towards that targeted 2% odd mark. The job market continues uh, to strengthen from here, and they're expecting gradual increases in rate hikes going ahead. The dollar index, as well as the bond yield, well, they were more or less unchanged. 
the dollar index, in fact, was uh, holding at around the 92.7 odd mark, currently at around 92 and a half. The bond yield as well, moving towards that 3% odd mark. In terms of the U.S. markets, initially we saw a bit of a pullback, but towards the final hour of trade, there was a bit of a sell-off. Apple was a star yesterday. When you have all the indices trading in the red, Apple was up close to around 4%, posted good numbers, and that's why that stock did well. But what didn't do really well was a few of those stocks. Verizon was under some pressure, Cisco as well as uh, Johnson & Johnson, all those three stocks did uh, away what Apple did on the positive side. In terms of economic data as well, the payrolls, that grew up by close to around 204,000, a tad bit better than what the street was working with. European markets, they did well. All those indices, they ran away. That's despite the fact that the Eurozone PM and manufacturing PMI data wasn't that good. That was brushed aside, and peripheral European markets as well did fairly well. Emerging markets, though, they were struggling. The Brazilian and the Russian index, both of them ended with cards of around a percent and a half, to around 2%. Moving to the Asian markets, the Japanese index is closed, but the yen has moved towards that 110 odd mark, so keep an eye out on that front. Other Asian markets, though, they are struggling. All eyes are on the US as well as the Chinese delegations. They're meeting today as well as tomorrow. What comes out of that? That's going to be the key focal point. SGX Nifty, though, indicating a start of around a cut of around 40 points odd. Back to you. Okay, thank you very much uh, for that summary. Uh, SGX Nifty, not really a mirror of what things are uh, what things are likely to pan out but it's important that uh, asian markets are in the red largely and of course the wall street indices also ended that way uh, but uh, is the fomc to blame jeff lewis uh, global strategist capital markets at manu life emc and james glassman senior economist at jp morgan join us on the phone line well good morning to one of you and good evening to the other uh, james uh, first to you and thank you for staying up uh, should we blame the uh, red in the equity markets on the Fed at all? Uh, it seems to be entirely unexpected lines, what the FOMC said and did. Yeah, I don't think the Fed was the issue. Um, they did exactly what people were expecting. They show they, they know that inflate, everything is sort of back to where they want it. They had some tolerance for inflation moves one side or the other. And, but nothing that they said today changed anybody's mind about the path that they're on. So, you know, the, the, the market largely thinks uh, it's priced for the Fed to move three times this year. They've done one already. And so I don't, I don't think the Fed is the issue. I think the real issue is the uncertainty around all this uh, tariff threats and trade issues, particularly the, the, with, the, with the Chinese situation. So I think it's going to take a while, before I think, before we clear the air on that issue. Okay. Jeff, hi. Good morning. Uh uh, April was a good month for most emerging markets, uh, but the first trading day of May, not that good. Uh, you reckon the selling may go away, may work this time? Um, well, I think uh, there's a lot of uncertainty over the trade issues, and I think that has been a big negative and overhang. And I don't think negotiations will be uh, will be over quickly. I think that's going to drag on for for some time. But um, I'm quite surprised by really how resilient the markets have been, given all these negative factors. The fact that we're only down a percent year to date suggests to me a degree of underlying strength. So uh, I, I wouldn't be giving up on emerging markets at this point. But of course, my, my main concern would be uh, not the Fed, uh, but um, the uh, future direction of, of the US dollar trade weighted index and whether that is now going to start strengthening. That would be a, a bigger headwind uh, in my mind for the emerging markets in coming weeks. We did, in fact, speak about that a while back. Jeff, morning. Uh, so, you know, the U.S. has finally achieved its inflation target of 2% after six years of failing to meet that target. How do you think that would change the texture of the next Fed move? Um, well, I think uh, that the Fed did change its language a bit. It did uh, say, uh, it did mention that the inflation objective is symmetric. Um, there wasn't really any change in the forward guidance. They kept the phrase that uh, economic conditions will warrant further gradual increases in the federal funds rate, and that, uh, that the rate remains below levels to be expected in the longer term. Uh, I think when it gets towards year end and they've had a couple more increases, they'll have to start uh, uh, changing that forward guidance, but uh, we're not quite there yet. Okay. Well, actually, uh, I was going to ask something on those lines. Uh, uh, James, they use the word symmetry. Uh, that would mean, if I would, I would assume, 
that since they have allowed rates to remain low for such a long time, they will not react immediately uh, if inflation were to rise above 2 percent. So should one read that as right. dovish? Um, many people do. I think that's the right interpretation. And the truth is, uh, the goal here for the Fed has been, as they have said for some time, to, on the assumption that the economy was going to be doing fine, the goal has been to move the Fed funds rate back towards 3 percent. So, you know, given the program they're on right now, uh, that might take them till the end of next year. So I don't think there's anything in here. And it, 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 this use of the word symmetry, I think, is trying to buy, uh, to, to remind people that they're not so jumpy about even if inflation moves on the high side. The goal, the goal here is to take your foot off the gas and get the funds rate back to something more normal. Mm. And it's doubtful that we're going to see anything okay. that's going to change that plan. Uh, and a final question too, and exactly what Jeff Lewis just spoke about, uh, uh, the dollar index now rising and has risen to almost four-year highs, 92.5 as we speak. You see more dollar strengthening, that's a bit of a scare for emerging markets. James? You know, I, do, I don't. I think, I think the issue uh, for the dollar has been, when we came into the year, there was a lot of optimism about Europe. Then all of a sudden, the numbers we're getting mm. uh, faded a bit. And I think maybe part of the problem is the sentiment numbers have really been weaker. I think the sentiment numbers are being driven by the fear of, of trade issues. So I, I, think, I think this is a little exaggerated. My guess is as we get into the spring, we're going to see better numbers coming out of okay. Europe. So I, I really don't think we're going to see the dollar uh, continue to rise. All right, okay. Jeff and uh, James, thanks so much for joining us. So, uh, not too much of a move expected. Uh, similar to what they did the last time around, the Fed has not moved on rates and, uh, you know, the language has not changed either. So, there is uh, that amount of price hikes or rate hikes expected. In fact, in the next June policy, there's a rate hike that most people are forecasting. We'll take a short break on that note. When we come back, it'll be time to talk about the top 10 list of stocks to watch as we head into trade today. Stay with us. We have been analyzing a lot of the macro markets, but let's now drill it down to the micros and tell you what to look at. Our research team is standing by with a list of top 10 stocks to watch for the trading day. Uh, Anuj, what are you looking at today? So, uh, Asian Paints is the first stock that I'm tracking. Strong delivery buying yesterday. It's consolidated over the last one year and uh, is moving out of uh, one year consolidation. So, let's see how this one moves. Uh, uh, big buying yesterday. And uh, Jet Airways, uh, been uh, bearish on this stock for some time now. It's a, uh, you know, in a bear market of its own, has collected 33% from its peak. Uh, and, you know, tough to see good numbers from Jet when Indigo is struggling. Uh, so, uh, you know, and it was down, of course, 8% yesterday. So, let's see, it's uh, clearly been a very weak stock. Yeah, of course, that ATF price didn't do it any yeah. good. Uh, but uh, Asian Paints actually has also now got a little bit of a tailwind that uh, crude, after all, didn't go above 75. Mm. All those stocks were kind of ignored uh, throughout the crude rise. And now they're getting a, a look in the paint stocks. Okay, but uh, clearly the stock of the morning would be Interglobe. Uh, Sonia, for multiple reasons, SEBI is probing something, but separately the results. Oh, the earnings were a shocker, the worst in Indigo's history, so I expect the stock to be under pressure. Quickly, let me take you through the numbers. Uh, it was a triple whammy for them. Uh, you can see the table there. Fuel costs have gone up, yields have fallen significantly. I haven't seen a 5.5% uh, you know, fall in yields in a very long time. And other costs have gone up. That's because, as we mentioned, they had those, en those you know, uh, plane grounding issues and they haven't re yet revealed what the compensation is from Pratt & Whitney, the engine maker. So these three costs have uh, surged and that's the reason why the, they've reported a profit drop of 117 crores. But that's not the problem. The problem is really, even in the reported numbers, there is a finance income of 248 oh. crores. So if you strip that off, it's actually an operational loss that uh, Indigo has seen. So I, the stock will be in the red today. And uh, I don't know, this n news of uh, uh, SEBI worried about uh, uh, the stock falling before the resignation yeah. announcement, something which uh, An Anuj kept pointing out several times. Uh, will also be a sentiment overhang on the stock. Okay, uh, Siemens as well. Anisha, you don't have too much of good news? Well, yes, not too much of good news coming in. As far as the number is concerned, it is in line with expectations. You can nitpick and say that the margins were a tad bit lower than expectations, but the revenue growth on a light-to-light -light basis came in at 10.6% versus expected growth of 10%. The energy management business of the company has done well. However, the power and gas business disappointed 
disappointed. Now, what also disappointed was the order inflow because the total order inflow in quarter two was around 2,900 crores, which is 40% lower than what it was last year. Now, of course, there was a one large order that was booked last year, but even the management commentary this time around was not too positive. They said that they are looking at delays in finalization of large orders and perhaps that should hit in sentiments in trade today. Okay, Anisha, thanks a lot for that. Ekta, uh, some bad bad news for Biocon? Well, yes, there was a pre-approval inspection by the US FDA for their biosimilar uh, Pegfilgrastim, basically this cancer biosimilar, uh, for their Bangalore facility and they've been issued seven observations by the US FDA, so negative news for them on that front. Separately, the European inspection which had taken place last month, now the, uh, now the report has come through and we understand that there are six observations on that front, not critical in nature as per the company. Remember, this is a re-inspection which take, took place by the European regulators after the 35 observations which were issued last year to the plant. So net-net, you can read it as a positive, but the US FDA news will dominate and hence I expect the stock to be in the red. Okay. That's unfortunate. Uh, that stock uh, seemed to be leading the pharma stocks out of their stupor, but uh, today it may take uh, uh, meet, meet the roadblock. Anisha, Tata Power's numbers, uh, we really need you to parse it for us. Well, other, I took quite a bit of time to surgically remove all those one offs and see what the net performance is. Because remember, there are a lot of moving parts as far as Tata Power is concerned, but net net, the performance has been weak. Now, if you look at uh, Mundra Power Plant, the losses there have expanded to 490 crores versus 140 crore reported last year. The under recovery there has expanded to 93 pesos per unit. Other than that, this is because, of course, the coal prices went up and this was also expected to help the company on the other front, given they also have coal operations in Indonesia. But there as well, the overall coal production came down and that's the reason it could not contribute a lot to the company's bottom line. However, the renewable business continues to do well. Even the standalone business did well. The other uh, glimmer of hope was the company's debt profile has improved. So the net debt has come down to 2.48 versus, uh, versus over three times. So that's what gives them support. But overall, the profitable of the company remains under a bit of scanner. Back to you. Primarily because of the deleveraging. Mm. Mm. I mean, people have moved the price very marginally from 100 to 105 and stuff like that. Yeah. But the deleveraging de has hit home. Okay, well, let's talk once again about HCL Tech because there was a conference call yesterday and remember, the guidance is something that didn't go down well with the street. Reema's here to tell us more on what came out at the conference call. Reema? Hi Sonia, good morning. The conference call was post market hours where the company specified the impact on account of the inorganic moves by the company on the guidance. So first the guidance 9.5 to 11.5% in constant currency for F519. This includes a 525 basis impact on account of acquisitions, 400 basis points on account of the acquisitions already concluded and 125 basis points on account of the acquisitions that the company will do. So the organic growth for the company will be seen at 4.25 to 6.25%, much lower than NASCOM, which is at 79%, lower than uh, Infosys as well, and lower than uh, market expectations as well. The company said it's on account of pressure in their deal renewal. So the organic growth for HCL technology continues to be muted. Okay, thanks a lot for that, uh, Reema. Also, today we'll have uh, hexavarious numbers, post-market hours, tomorrow's NIT tech. So it will be interesting to see the, the big outperforming stocks, how do they perform in earnings. But... Uh, uh, Sonia, Hero Motor Corp, uh, uh, some more details now? Yes, you know, we, we were uh, talking yesterday about how the margins were below what the street was estimating because of certain costs that they've had to incur. There was a conference call yesterday, post-market hours, and they spoke about how the margin headwinds could continue over the next one to two quarters. Uh, you know, they do have some uh, higher raw material costs, which could see a lag effect. So over the next one to two quarters, uh, commodity inflation is something that will impact them. Not just that, as we know, there are safety devices, uh, the ABS and the CBS, which is the anti-braking system, which is compulsory on bikes from April. That would mean higher uh, costs for the bikes, which they would have to pass on. But in this competitive environment, you don't know if they would, you know, sort of uh, take in that or pass it on. But that will be an additional cost and that could be a margin headwind. And also the LEAP program, which is their cost-cutting program, that has now come to an end. Okay, so that would be a little bit of a negative. Uh, for Sonal Gujarat Fluru. 
Uh, well, I'm looking out for that stock because US has imposed anti-dumping duty on PTFE resin. That is one of the major chemicals that the company produces. Now, the release says that 2016 imports of PTFE resin from India amounted to around 14.3 dollar millions. And also because uh, the Indian exporters were dumping that particular chemicals at a price low by 18.9 percent, and that is the main reason why this why this anti-dumping duty has been levied. I was going through the financials for nine months FY18. The revenue from PTFE for this particular company is at 550 crores, which represent 20% of the total revenues. They have not given the breakup, so that is some clarity that we require, but the stock will be in focus today for this reason. Well, that will be a risk. That, that's the money at risk, 550 crore. Okay, uh, just stay on. Other stocks that are on your, on your radar? Well, I have a bunch of results to talk about. So I'll start with Godavari, Parents and Espath. Very strong set of numbers and it was because the steel segment per outperformed. The EBITDA went up by 102%. Even the profits came in higher by five times. Expect that stock to be in green today. Mahindra Logistics, another strong set of numbers. The EBITDA was coming up at 4.2% uh, versus 2.8%. Sorry, the EBITDA margins. Even the profits went up by 69% at 20.8 crores. Expect some, ex expect some green on that stock as well. Aztec Life Sciences, good set of numbers. Revenue went up by 49% and the profits that also went up by four times. International paper that showed some good set of numbers, EBITDA was up 21%. Even the profits, they went up by 110% and it was the cost control that really aided in margin expansion. Imami paper mills, another good set of numbers, the EBITDA went up by two times and they reported the profits this time versus a loss last year. Expect that stock to be in green. TBZ, very strong set of numbers. They uh, The revenue growth was very strong because the company said that this is because of the marriage season. The operating profit margins came in at 4.2% versus 1.9% last quarter and profits were at around 7 crores versus a loss of 3 crores last year. Responsive Industries revenue was down around 48% and they reported a pat of around 3.8 crores. That is because they have they had another income of around 5 crores. Rani Engines revenue was up 5% but the losses, they expanded at 8.8 .8 crores versus losses of 0.27 crores last year. Expect a red on that stock. Uh, National Fertilizers uh, reported a bad set of numbers. EBITDA was down 16%. That was because the expenses like employee expenses, power and fuel expenses went up. Even PAT was down around 24%. Expect a red on that stock. Okay, thanks a lot for that. Uh, another set of stocks that you would uh, watch out for today is the tyre stocks. MRF, in fact, has announced a price increase. Uh, it just came out overnight, so the price increase is to the tune of 100 to 500 rupees on all its variants of truck tyres. Now, this, remember, is to pass on the higher carbon black and nylon costs that we've seen over the last many months. And um, we expect Apollo tyres to also f follow suit with this price increase. It is generally, you know, uh, an effort from the entire sector. So I expect these stocks to be in the green in reaction to that. Okay, and that's the meaning of inflation is coming up, yeah. uh, not just in the US, in India as well. Mm -hmm. If producers get that pricing power, then you will be able to see it in the macros as well. But uh, we want to recap. Uh, okay, before that, Anisha, you have some more stocks on your uh, radar? Well, yes, Lata, I'll start with PC Jewelers, which has been in tremendous pressure, under tremendous pressure in the last few days. Now, yesterday, Fidelity, one of the institutional investors, mentioned that they've sold over 1% stake in the open market. Let's see whether that selling pressure continues or not. Moving on to Adani Ports, well, of course, the company will be in focus as it is expected to report a decent quarter this time. But other than that, uh, there is a positive news as the Supreme Court has given the environmental clearance when it comes to the Hazira port of the company, and that should really support the price today. Moving on to Sequel Logistics, wherein the company has received a letter of award from Nathan Coalfields for a total contract of around 1,350 crores, so that should board well for the company as well. And lastly, on Shankara Building Products, well, there's a board meet on May 10th where they will consider the fundraising. We don't know the quantum yet, but this one has been quite a bit of well generator for the investors. Okay, thanks for that, Anisha. I just wanted to correct the manner in which uh, the Adani Ports uh, line went. The Supreme Court did not cancel the uh, environmental permission. The NGT, the National Green Tribunal, had cancelled. The Supreme Court has cancelled their order. So it's actually positive for Adani Ports, as Anisha said. Mm. Uh, you may have been mistaken if you looked at our graphics. Okay. Well, Adani Ports, in any case, has done really well, right? Over the last one to two months, it's put on quite a bit of weight, as you can see. But here's a quick recap of our top stocks. Expected to gain today are names like Asian Pains, Godavari Power and Ispat, Mahindra Logistics, Aztec Life Sciences, International 
International Paper, Imami Paper Mills, uh, TBZ, Adani Ports, Sika Logistics and Shankara Build Pro. While stocks that are going to be under pressure today, Jet Airways, Interglobe Aviation, Siemens, Biocon, Tata Power, HCL Tech, Gujarat Floro, Hero Motor Corp, Responsive Industries, Rane Engines, NFL and PC Jewelers. We'll take a short break but lots on coming up on the other side so don't go anywhere. Ashwini Gujarat, Sudarshan Sukhani and Rajat Bose will be with us.